Welcome back guys, my name is Austin from AwfulMedia.com and this is part 6 of the Inventory System Tutorial Series in Unity 3D. In this part we're going to work on creating an Add Item method that we can just pass it an item ID, it'll search through our inventory, find an empty slot, and then search through the database and find the item that matches that ID and then store it in the inventory and then as a result showing it in the slot. We will then work on creating an item uh, check, I don't know, something to check to see if our inventory has an item in it. This can be used a lot of different ways in different games, but the main thing I'm thinking of is say you have uh, a thing in a, in a game where it says, hey, go find this item for me, and you come back to the guy and you say, yeah, I got the item, then you have to check the player's inventory to make sure that their inventory does contain an item before you can reward them or something like that. Or maybe you uh, want to extend this inventory and add stackable items. So then you would check to see if the inventory already contains items of the same type. And if it does, then you would just add one to the stack, something like that. Completely up to you. But we're going to do both of those methods in this part. The next part we will create a remove item method and then probably work on generating a tooltip and that will be part six or hmm, is this is this part six this I don't know I forgot what part we're on so we'll figure it out <laughs> next time though but for now let's go ahead and get started on these two methods the first one being the add item method we're going to uh, the way we're doing this here is fine but I want to base the item that we're adding to the inventory off of the item ID and not off of the index in the database uh, for now those two things are the same thing but what if you add and remove an item from the inventory and I don't know say you mess up the index but the ID will always be the same right so you're adding items based on the index and you accidentally change the index of that item well now you have to go back through and change all of the things that add that item or check for that item based on that ID or based on that index but if you use the ID you can just change the ID of the item back without having to go through and make sure you insert it into the correct location in the list so to make our lives a lot easier down the road if we do it based on a value that we set ourselves so to do that I want to start with setting up a void add item call it what you will but this is gonna work for me and now add item will take it will take a single parameter uh, I can't think of any other values it will need other than the ID no, I think it's just the ID. So we'll do int ID. So this method will be looking for a parameter of an integer that we'll use as the ID. Now the first thing that we have to do is go through our inventory and see if we have an empty slot. So the way we can do that is do a for. We'll say int i is equal to 0 i is less than do inventory count get all the items in the inventory and then do i plus plus done this 20 times now so now we have that we can check to see if we have an empty slot by saying inventory i dot item name is not equal to null or is equal to null we want to know if it is empty so the way we're doing this here, if it's not equal to null, then we have an item in it, so we'll draw the texture for the icon. The way we're doing it here is we're checking to see if it is null. If it is, then we can put an item here. So the first thing I want to do is, when it is null, I want to make sure that we stop looking. So I'm going to break out of this it statement, if statement, and as a result, breaking out of this for loop so it stops completely, and then it will return back to where this method was called and that's what we want so don't look anymore you found an empty slot but on top of this I want to do well we could just do if we weren't doing a based on ID I could just say inventory I as that is the slot that is empty is equal to uh, database dot items I or no not dot nah yeah ID 
I do, yeah, there we go. So I could do that, and that will set inventory i, which is the empty slot, to be equal to whatever the ID for the item is that we passed it. So we can test this. So to test this, I'll say add item, and I'll pass it the item one. What errors have we created? None, great. All right, now we have a t-shirt. And I could do add item. I'm passing it the ID. So one is the ID for t-shirt. Zero is the ID for that amulet. So we'll start again here. And there we have the amulet. So that actually works well for us. And it is based on the ID. No, we're basing it. Yeah, see, that's what the issue is here. We're basing it on the index still. So we want to actually base it on the ID. And the way we're going to have to do that is check to see if the item in the database at this position if its ID is equal to the ID that we sent it. So the way I can do that is I'll say another four here. Now keep in mind, we have a four here, but this will only be called whenever the add item is called. And then we have an if saying, if it's null, then it will do this for loop. So it's not like it's a lot going on here. It just looks like there is quite a bit, but this will only happen until this meets something. And then when this meets, uh, when this becomes true, this will break out and stop this loop. So then this loop will go until it does what it's supposed to do though. And then we'll break out of it as well. So we won't be really uh, slowing the game down very much, if any. So I'm gonna do an int j is equal to zero. We already have i used, so we can't use i again here, but we can use j. i, j, k is usually uh, the variables that you use when you're nesting loops like that. But we did up here y and x because that represents the columns and rows. And then j is less than database.items.count and then j++, same thing. But now we're going through all the items in the database instead of the items in the inventory. I will then say if database.items j dot item ID is equal to ID. I think my brain is working correctly here. So we have J here and that's going through. So if it is equal to ID and that should be good. Then I could say inventory I is equal to database dot items J. Okay. So does that make sense? We went through the four here, got the I, then found the empty slot. Now we're going through the four here and setting J to be equal to the item index for the all the items in the database. And then we're checking to see if we can find an item that matches the ID that we passed it. Now we should not have to break out of this one because it will only find one, as there should only be one item with that ID. If there's not, then you uh, don't understand what the item ID is for. So we do that, we find the correct item, and then we set the inventory I, which is here, this I here, okay, which is there, the empty slot, to be equal to the item in the database that matches the ID that we passed it. Lots of logical stuff going on here, so it might be kind of difficult at first, but I think, I do think it makes sense. Hit Control S to save that, and then now, we should it should be it should be the same thing but based on the ID so now I could change the position in the inventory or in the database list and keep the item ID the same and it won't change a thing because it's based on that one value and not based on the index so that's how I'm going to do the add item method you may have a completely different approach you may not care about the uh, the item ID being the value that you use. And if not, then you can simplify this method quite a bit. You probably found another way to do it that's a lot easier than, than this way, and that's fine as well. I just hope I'm teaching you something, making you think a different way about it. And if I am, then I am succeeding. So the next method I want to do is an inventory check method. And I want to call this, we're going to do a void, and I'll say inventory contains. Now, actually this won't be a void, this will be a bool method, a boolean method. Now void, if you've not taken my basic series, void, when you uh, define a method, means that it will return nothing. There will be no value 
that this method returns. So when I call a method, wherever I call a method, call draw inventory here, and it's void, this will not return anything to this position it is called at. But if it said boolean, when this is called, this will return a value to where it was called. So it'll return true or false based on what I tell it to return. So this will return a boolean. True or false? Yes or no? What happened? I need to pass it another ID. You're going to be checking for an item based on an ID. So now, if I was to do something, I would say like return true. And that would return the value true. So if this item does exist in the inventory, we want to return true. Else, return false. That's going to be the basis for this method. And we can use that to check to see, and later on we could call it and say, inventory contains, pass it an ID, and use that value to know whether or not the player actually has that item in their inventory. We'll do another for loop. Int i equals zero. I know it gets boring after a while. <laughs> i is less than uh, inventory dot count i plus plus. Now I need to say like return, and we will return true or false if a condition was met. So if this item is in the inventory, do that. But I want to return it based on a simple boolean that would be something like inventory uh, i dot item id is equal to uh, id so now this should return true or false ba based on whether or not this condition is met notice the double equal sign one equal sign is setting a value two equal signs is checking a condition it's a boolean hit control s and see if that's going to work for us Okay, so I have some unreachable code, not old code pass return a value. That means it doesn't like the way I'm returning this value. So what we'll probably do is bring the return down, store the uh, return in a variable. So I'll set up a variable up here, call it bool, and set it to result. So bool result will store true or false based on what it is. And it's brought outside of the for loop so that it is default we'll set it default to false and if we meet a true we will set it to true so I'll say uh, result is equal to whatever the result of that is and then I could just say return result and now this will return whatever this result is uh, but the issue here again <laughs> another issue is that we're looping through how many inventory slots we have and changing the result to be equal to something each time. So we need to wait until we see a true, and if we do come across a true, we want to break out and return the result. If there's never a true though, just return false anyway. So we can do something like if, and we need to see if result is actually equal to true, so we can do result, because this will be reset, or this will be set to true or false based on if the item does exist. So if, if it is true, then we can just say if true, so if result true, do that. And if it never is set to true, then it will always be false. So this condition will never be met. Therefore, the code within this if statement will never run. So if true, just break out of that for loop and go down to the return result and return true. And if I'm not mistaken, that'll work. I did not have this in the inventory that I showed you at the beginning of the series so that's just something off the top of my head maybe it'll work though we'll see we can test it by we'll do a print at start so I'll print now I can print inventory contains because it returns a value you can't print a void because it does not return anything but inventory contains will give me a true or a false so I can say inventory contains, let's check to see if it contains one, item ID one. We know it does because we added one right here. So inventory contains one. It should print true if this is working correctly. True, cool. I didn't have to hit I to show that, but true. 
So that's good. Let's check to see if it is holding item zero, if that does exist. Uh, true again, which is good. Now let's see if there if it can give me a false like it should. We don't have an item four in our inventory. False. Great, so that's working for us uh, just like I wanted it to. So now we could do in the future, say we could say, uh, we want to know if the player actually went and got the uh, the pot from that cave. <laughs> okay, I'm not a game designer. <laughs> so he went and got this pot from the cave. That was the quest. So now we can say later on, when he talks to that guy, if player got quest item that was set, so if player got pot, and we could check that by saying if inventory contains item ID for pot, then uh, complete quest or give reward or thank you or something like that. So you can do something like that with this. We won't go that far with it, but you now have the feature in the inventory to do that pretty simply. So that's going to do it for this part. We got an add item method set up and then we got an inventory contains method set up. Pretty cool, I think. In the next part, we will work on a remove item, which is a bit more tricky. So if you want to go ahead and try that for yourself and see what you come up with, you might come up with something better than I came up with. And if so, that's good. Let me know about it because I'd like to know. And we will work on, what did I say? Oh, we will start the tooltip system, which will be quite fun and uh, quite different. So if you want to see that, be sure you are subscribed to Awful Media. Check out the website, awfulmedia.com. If you have a question, go to the forum under categories on awfulmedia.com. Leave me a comment and a like if you liked this video. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.